Hi there, welcome to the Hot Seat with Priscilla Kuma. My name is Priscilla Kuma. Thanks for sharing my videos. Thanks for watching and subscribing. If you are new here, subscribe and share. And if you're already here, thanks for coming once again. It's a new year and I wish you a very happy new year. We pray for good stuff this year. I have a guest with me today. He's going to introduce himself and tell us why he's here today. His name is Bright. Hi, Bright. Welcome to my YouTube channel. What have you been up to, Bright? <laughs> Um, nothing much. We're just grateful to God for making us uh, in 2021. So you are a nurse. I've known you for close to 11 years. Yeah, sure. we, we worked together back in Ghana, yeah. somewhere 2011, and uh, you're a very hardworking nurse. Yeah. You currently live in the United States. What are you doing in the United yeah. States currently? First of all, I want you to introduce right. yourself. Who is Brad? My name is Bright J. Contour. I'm from Ghana. Um, I used to work at La General Hospital um, till 2018, 2019, where I think I left to America. You know, my reason to be in America was to get to practice as an anesthesiologist, nurse anesthesiologist. So that was my motivation to come to America. And to do that, you need to be able to start as a nurse to uh, continue with the studies. So I have to start as a nurse. So currently I'm practicing as a RN, which is a registered nurse, yeah, which is the basis to be able to go to anesthesia school in the future. Yeah, so that's what I do now. Okay. And to practice as a nurse in America, you require the license to practice. As everybody else in other countries, you always need a license to practice because the profession that requires a license. How did you get your license? And do you want to talk about the process, the NCLEX process? Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. So, um, um, getting the NCLEX license, um, if you have, if you do not have much knowledge about it, it could be a bit frustrating, it could be a bit difficult. Uh, but if you have the information you need, it could be very easy for you. And as I said, um, I used a lot of my mates who are already in the system to help or guide me uh, what is it with the process yeah and i think this has been something i'm even trying to even come up with so we spoke about it to be able to um, help our friends and families back home who also want to uh, get their RN license or um, those who are reckless application so um, first you must have a diploma a degree or an associate diploma in america the diploma is known as Associate diploma. So, depending on which part of the world you are you're coming from, you should have your qualification, educational qualification, which is a diploma, associate degree, or the degree, or that is a bachelor's. Yeah. So, when you have that, um, you must be licensed in your home country yeah, because they will need to verify from your home country your uh, um, this experience and all that because they will need a verification from the state or your. your, your military body from back home, they will need that too. But they don't need, who do not need a valid license? For them, they could be an international student who want to just get straight uh, iron license in the US, and that is also possible because I've seen people who didn't have a valid license back home because one or, they had one or two issues with their examination or their license here back home, but they feel they could write an American exam. So once you have your educational qualification, you're good to go. Yep. So you should have, um, you, should, you should be licensed then, um, the second thing is you should be able to know which state in the U.S. you want to practice in because every state in the U.S. has its own requirement. Every state in the U.S. has its own requirement. I started mine when I was in Ghana and I knew that New York and California were the only states that could allow people who didn't have social security or who didn't have residence permit to be able to get a valid license, go through the process to get a valid license. Now that is the only state I know they do that. For most of the states, you need to have a social security or you need to have a residence permit to be able to go through your NCLEX application process with them. Yeah, so every state uh, has its own regula uh, regulations. Yep. So a state like Massachusetts without social security, you can never do that. And the rest too. Yep. So you need to know which state you want to practice in so that you don't get complicated, especially when you are coming outside the United States. If you are already in the U.S., 
um, and you have your resident permit or you have your social security, you can just decide, you just call your state you find yourself in and know if their requirement is easy to go about. Because some also even require that you write an English test, an English proficiency exam to be able to uh, grant you the permission to write the anklets. Yep. Okay, so that is another thing. And then um, um, you should, when you decide on which states you want to work in, you should be able to uh, register with a credential evaluation service. For example, is the CDNFS, that's Commission on Graduates of Foreign Nurses, foreign nurses, uh, nursing students. Foreign nursing students, yep. That's CDNFS. Or the World Aid Service. These are agencies that help to evaluate your education, education and qualification to be able to make sure that it meets the American standards. So I used CDNFS and they are very smooth, they are very efficient, and everything was okay. Yep. So you create an account with them, then I think you choose the state you want to practice in on the app portal. They want to choose every state has an amount that they charge, a fee that they charge. So I think um, New York, I used them, um, I paid about $360 after that time. Yep. So you pay that and a few hours a day, they will send you um, uh, some documents to be able to fill them. Some you have to take to your uh, schools that you attended to be able to get your principals, um, endorse them, take some to your um, your your home country uh, regulatory body, national regulatory body. So in Ghana, I took mine to the uh, Ghana, um, how do you call it, Nurses and Midwifery Council. Yeah. Yeah, they will do that to be able to release your registration details to them. Yeah. So I did that. Then uh, I had to get clearance from the Ministry of Health because um, we know back home most of our education are uh, sponsored or partly sponsored. So to be able to uh, leave the country, you need to make sure that you have served the number of years you need to serve after school. So I did all that to be able to get all this, all those clearance. Then um, I had opportunity to be cleared by CGNFS. So CGNFS cleared me. And by then, um, I also knew the state I was going to practice in, which was in New York, where I was getting my license to. So I also registered with New York State Board of Nursing. Um, I sent them my documents I needed, and I paid, um, I think, $147, $147 or so. That is the registration fee with them. And when you pay that, and CGNFS is done with the evaluation, they will send your documents to the state. Yeah, and when the state gets it, and they also compare what you bring them, then they, could, um, they will send you uh, an email congratulating you that uh, your education has been accepted. And if you haven't registered for the NCLEX exams with the test uh, body, you need to go get, uh, you need to get a registration done and schedule your exams. Yeah, so that is how it goes. Now, the you schedule exams, I don't know if you want to talk about that now. Yes, so that's a lot of information. But basically what someone needs to know is the states they are going to and the process that the state requires and the amount involved. So as a Ghanaian, as a Ghanaian nurse, you either have a diploma or a degree and you, you're good to go. You, you qualify to apply for the process, right? Okay. So how long did it take yep. you? Yep. Did you? Did you start your application from Ghana before coming into okay. the U.S.? Yeah, I did. I did all my feasibility studies back in Ghana. Created my um, account with CGNFS back in Ghana, but I didn't have the means to be able to register because three hundred sixty dollars to register with New York was a problem. So when I got a chance to come here, then I got in and I had the money. Then I created and I, and I registered. So I registered. I think twenty nineteen uh, June. Twenty nineteen May. No, I think May. May, June, I got registered with New York on the CGNFS portal, okay. you get it? So um, when I registered with them, then they sent me the information, then I started taking them to Ghana to get them those and all that. So I think I did that. Then I think in September, October, I sent my application to New York State Board of Nursing. Yeah. When I did that, and then I think first January, first January, no, November, um, no, in November, November, um, CGNFS, my 
evaluation. We were done with my evaluation. Then first January 2020, yeah, I got my uh, ATT. I got my ATT um, to no, it wasn't ATT. I got my email indicating that I, I'm eligible to take the NCLEX exam. Yep, I got the email to indicate. Then that was that was when I decided when to take the exam. So when I got that, then I had to plan on how I'm going to take the exam. So I think two or three days I scheduled for the exams. Then um, yep, I registered with Kessing View. So when you get an email, you register with Kessing View, and they are the people who were uh, supervisors or organizing the test. So that's scheduled. But I think the COVID came in, and I had to reschedule several times because. I was I was trying to take the exams in May in New York, but the COVID, you know, after that time was so bad in New York that most yeah. things were activities were closed. So I couldn't take it. I had to reschedule it several times. Then I had a, a test center. One thing is, irrespective of the state is in, you can take your NCLEX exams in any other state in the US. Yeah. It is an international, it is a national exam. Mm -hmm. It's a national exam. So if you want to practice in Massachusetts and you feel you are in New York or um, Connecticut or any state would be easy for you to go there to write exams, you can do that. Once you get the exams done, your results will be sent to your state board and that is it. So I later got a, a date um, at Massachusetts, which was in 15th, no, I think I wrote my exams on 10th of July. By last year, yep, I wrote my exams on 10th of July, and um, yeah, in Massachusetts, yep. Though I I was registered with me in New York, so I got my um, exams done in Massachusetts, and I I, I passed. I passed with city question. You know, because of the uh, because of the COVID, there has been review instead of the minimum uh, 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 minimum question to pass, which was 70, it has been reduced to 60. So I think I used 60 to pass. Within an hour, yeah. yeah. Wow, that's impressive. Congratulations. So you registered with New Thanks. York. Thanks. You registered with New York Board of Nursing, but you are not practicing in, in New York yep. State. Did you have to transfer your license to be able to practice? No, in no, no. I'm not practicing. Yeah, I have to. I have to. Yes, there's one. We or um, endorsement or uh, reciprocity. Some of the states, even some of the states, New York is not part. There are some states that I could, I, would, I just didn't need to even transfer. I just need an endorsement. That would be easy. I think the compact, the nursing nice, nice compact system, yeah, for them, some of the states are like that. So, like Massachusetts, you can have IO, Texas, and most of the states to practice with just the license you have here. Now they are trying to even get a universal license yeah. for the compact state. So that when you have that, you don't need even an endorsement. You can just go there. Yeah. So from New York to Massachusetts, you need to get a, a, a transfer and a verification and a whole lot. So they have to do all that. Yeah. Then even get registered again in Massachusetts to be able to get a state license. State board of nursing license. Yeah. So how quick was that? And did you have to pay yeah, something? Not, that, that is not difficult. That is not difficult because the most important thing you need to do is done it. Um, I think I had a, a colleague who was who's was difficult because she used California and California after that time, or I don't know even after now, they didn't allow her to go to um, or didn't were not using um, a credential evaluation services. So for them, you just apply directly to the state. They do their own evaluation, and they yeah. accept you to write the NCLEX exams. Unlike most of the states, they need to use the uh, evaluation. So after going through California, having California State Board of Nursing license, and now she want to come to Massachusetts to work, what she did was she had to go start all over with CGNF. She has to start all over with CGNF. Get application done, send documents to Ghana, got them as an order, come for CGNFS to evaluate them and accept for Massachusetts. Then, when they accepted it, and they will send it to Massachusetts, the Massachusetts will go and do, uh, how do you call it, uh, verification with California. 
then and when the, everything uh, right people to go to CGNFS, whichever street you find yourself, CGNFS or World Education Service. But I use CGNFS and I can I can testify um, how smooth their process was. Yeah. Okay. So I had a colleague who also began the process from Ghana before he came into the US. So he was using Colorado because Colorado didn't in, in require a lot of things that he, he needed to be in the US to do. So he was living in Ghana, but he chose Colorado to do the whole process. Yeah. Then when he got here, he wrote the enclaves for Colorado, but he lives in Connecticut. So he did a transfer or something like that. But later on, he was trying to get to move to California or somewhere else to practice. And he, he, I think he wanted to do just New York or California. And to get a transfer, it took him about, they told him it was gonna take 16 weeks to transfer that license to New York to be able to practice with it. And 16 weeks is four months. So he just gave up on that and chose to use it to practice in Connecticut where he lives. But this information is very good. There are so many people who want oh, okay. to practice but they don't know where to start from. So talk about the endless process itself. Yeah. How was the preparation for the exams like? How was the examination like? How was the D-Day that you took the test? How was it like for you? The exam itself is a difficult one. I must be frank with you. Compared <laughs> to the, uh, the nature of our training and level of knowledge, if we are just a, a general nurse coming from Ghana, where I was trained, I must be frank with you. You need to set up, you need to do a lot of studies, where they call it content. You need to do a lot of content, just like starting nursing all together. But just that you wouldn't have the last week to go to another lecture, uh, lecturer and student relationship to be able to go to, get all those information. So you have to do all, them, all that yourself. So, what I did was in 2018, when I planned to go through this process, I got um, uh, Sanders. Uh, review book, this edition, I started reading them, I read from cover to cover. So even when I got here and I was still going through the process, started the process, I was still reading, that was all that I was reading till I, some people, I, I, I spoke to some few friends who gave me other materials and resources and I started reading them. So I did a lot of content. Mm -hmm. And one thing that helped me so much was my background in anesthesia. I did anesthesiology mm -hmm. uh, in Ghana, so that helped me a lot. That made me have an advantage on physiology, anatomy, most of this lab test and all that. So it wasn't much of a problem. But I, I realized that most general nurses will, will have it, will, will, will see it as a problem because we are not used to reading laboratory results and investigation, um, what is it, other investigations, pharmacology, going deep into pharmacology in relation to lab tests and all that. We are not used to that. There's, there's some, um, when you talk about a drug like diuresis, when somebody has hypokalemia, it's a no, 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 you know, but we are not used to all those things. But America, we have to put um, all those in relation to be able to uh, be a safe, uh, safe nurse for your client. So it was tough, you know, um, it, it was tough, but I managed to, you know, do it. So when I got my ATT, I bought a new world, um, online uh, account and I started doing their questions. I started doing their questions. At the beginning, it was tough because I wasn't getting the, <laughs> the results I was looking at. It was tough, you know, because of sometimes when you try to apply what's back home or what you, what you were doing back home in America, you're going to get all your answers wrong because they are totally different. There are certain things you will do as a nurse back home, but here, as a nurse, you can do it. And there are certain things um, you wouldn't do back home, but here as a nurse, you will be allowed to do it. So these are the challenges with uh, the anchors. When I did the U word and I got the strategies, you need, you need after learning the content, you need to learn the strategies. Mm -hmm. The strategies will help you. The application of the what the nursing process, the application of what Maslow's need of theory. When you meet a question that is talking about priorities and talking about first and all that, you need to be able to analyze using the uh, nursing process, using the Maslow's list of theory or the ABC of what, managing emergency, airway, bl uh, blood and circulation. You need to get these strategies to be able to help you 
get the right exam because most of the answers might sound um fit right. now, they might sound fit for the mm -hmm. questions yes but you need to be able to know which one comes out best or which one is the safest you get it to be able to so i did all that i got the strategies i watch a lot of youtube videos then um when my exams was rescheduled from uh may to june uh i think because of the cut base you would give us extra days to be able to use it because of COVID. so i had like a month or two extra because i did it was supposed to be for 90 days three months but i had like almost uh, five months of studying that so when i did that um, um i was ready i think a few weeks to my exams i bought somebody told me about uh, ncsbn that's national council for state board of nursing ncsbn they, um, um, they are how do you call it they are online uh, question banks yeah so i got that to a certain learning and i realized they have um, a lot of information they were straightforward they were very summarized and I, I i i tend to introduce it to a lot what is it a lot of people who are just starting it after doing the content the books the couple and the sounders and all that you should be able to also um learn with ncsb and uh, online question bank that they call it the learning extension so i did that and i realized it was also very helpful and i thought if i was taking my exams even in may i wouldn't have passed it mm -hmm. yeah because using that also open my, uh, my mind to a lot of things yeah. i got prepared well went to the exam center exam center on um third of was it third or oh, yeah i think third july or second july i went there i think i wrote my exams on the first yeah it was a tuesday first july yep so i wrote i i i took the exams then i have 60 62 63 questions the machine went off wow. and i knew i wasn't going to feel trust me i told myself there's no way so you need you need courage too i might be frank with you the exams are not straightforward questions that you're going to see them and feel like oh this one i answered it correctly you need to think 